God for this privilege and opportunity to share God's word in this first Holy Ghost service in the year 2021. And it's my prayer as we go into the word of God, God's blessings shall abound upon each and every one of your lives in the name of Jesus. May we kindly pray. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, for you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you. And that's, Lord, who just who are. You are great. There is none as great, as mighty, as glorious, as beautiful as you. And as we go into your word, I ask, O oh Lord, by the power of your word, may your blessings from the throne of grace be made manifest upon each and every one that heard my voice. Blessed be thy name. Speak, we ask, O oh Lord, in Jesus' awesome name, we pray. Beloved, as you are all aware, the theme for this Holy Ghost service is God bless you. It's a word we hear so often, but little seem to understand the importance and the significance of the word. And before our Father and the Lord comes forth, I, I'd like to just share with us a bit on God bless you. Genesis chapter 28, verse 1 to 4. Genesis 28, 1 to 4. Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. Arise, go to Pandaranium, to the house of Bethel, thy mother's father, and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy father's brother. Verse 3 says, And God Almighty bless thee, and make thee fruitful, and multiply thee, and thou sh that thou mayest be a multitude of people, and give thee the blessings of Abraham to thee and to thy seed with thee, that thou mayest inherit the land wherein thou art a stranger, which God gave unto Abraham. And this was Isaac blessing his son Jacob. And he mentioned there, look, as you do that which I've asked you, God bless you. He was specific. That was a father releasing a God bless you to his son. And in number 6, 22 to 27, number 6, 22 to 27, we see the Lord speaking to Moses as he say, speak unto Aaron thy son on this wise. You shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance unto you and give thee peace. And they shall put thy name upon the name children of Israel, and I will bless them. You see, there are various things we should understand. There's the Father's blessing. And there is, that's the father blessing the children and saying, God bless you. There's also the prophet blessing and saying, God bless you. And you see, there are several kinds of God bless you. There are times we greet each other and say, ah, my brother, God bless you. That is simply a compliment. It's a salutation. There's the other one when the parent, a child, you pray for the parent and say, Daddy, may God bless you. Okay, that's a call upon God to bless you. But you see, there is the one that really matters. Not the compliment, not the call, but there's the command, the decree. And who can give a decree? It's someone that has the authority to give a decree. Your biological parents can give a decree. God bless you. But your spiritual parents have a greater authority to give that decree. God bless you. And it's my prayer, brethren, as our Father and the Lord comes forth with the God bless you upon our lives. By his grace and mercy, God's blessings shall be made manifest upon each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. When we are talking about God's blessings, we are talking about releasing something good into your life. Bestowing something good, which is the opposite of a curse, which is releasing something evil. The Bible tells us, James 1, 17, James 1, 17, every good and perfect gift comes from the Father above. The father of light, whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So when we are saying, God bless you, we are saying, Lord, from above, release your gifts upon your children. Let's understand that blessing is a creative right. Genesis 1, 27 to 28. Genesis 1, 27 to 28. God created man, and God blessed them, 
and said, be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, dominate. It is a creative right. It's not just a creative right. It's a covenant right. The word of God tells us in Genesis or Galatians 3, 13 to 14, Galatians 3, 13 to 14, how by reason of a covenant, the blessings of Abraham comes upon the Gentiles. It's a covenant right. Blessing is also a commanded right. When God commands his blessings, Deuteronomy 28 verse 8, Deuteronomy 28 verse 8, the Lord commands blessings upon thee. That's a commanded right, a commanded blessing. We see that also in Psalm 133 verse 3. Psalm 133 verse 3 says the Lord commands blessings. So one can be blessed by reason of, yes, God had created us, we are blessed. By reason of covenant, you are blessed. By reason of a command, you are blessed. But let's also realize it's a conditional right. Gen Deuteronomy 28, verse 1, and if you read through to 8, Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 down to 8, the Bible makes it clear, as you observe and hearken unto certain conditions, all these blessings shall come upon you. And it's my prayer, beloved brethren, that as we hear God's word, God's blessings, as we hear the God bless you from our Father and the Lord, God's blessings shall be multiplied. Benefits from above shall be made manifest on all our lives in the name of Jesus. You see, when that God bless you said, it activates certain things in your life. In the first instance, when you hear a God bless you from a authoritative so someone that has an authority over you, no, curses are overruled. You are insulated from curses. The word of God tells us in Numbers 22 verse 12, Numbers 22 verse 12, God said unto Balaam, hey, these people are blessed, so they can't be cursed. When you are, you hear God bless you, it insulates you. So much so that when people try to curse you, it can't stand. Why? There's a God bless you, a blessing that's insulating you from curses. Beloved, as we receive that God bless you, any curse that's trying to fly around shall not come near you in the name of Jesus. Oh, Numbers 23 verse 20, Numbers 23 verse 20. Balaam said, I've received a commandment to bless. He has been blessed. It can't be reversed. As our daddy in the Lord later speaks for that, God bless you. Brethren, it shall not be reversed. You shall move forth through the course of this year, experiencing the beauty of the blessings of the Lord in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says, no enchantment, no divination shall be able to come near you. That is by reason of a God bless you that insulates you from curses. At times, people get so difficult, so challenged when people curse them. A curse without a cause can't, can, 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 can be of any use whatsoever. The Bible says it will not even rest upon you. The NIV translation of Proverbs 26 verse 2, Proverbs 26 verse 2, a cause, a curse without a cause cannot come to rest. Brethren, I stand to declare by the power of God's word, as you go forth, as you receive that God bless you, every curse that's trying to fly forth shall, shall not come near you or your dwelling place in the name of Jesus. A second thing you should realize about blessings, apart from curses being overruled, when you receive the God bless you, you become a custodian of blessings. What does that mean? You become full of blessings. We see that in Deuteronomy 33, verse 23. Deuteronomy 33, verse 23. As you move forth, you become full of blessings. You just begin to express blessings on every side. Why? Because you have received the God bless you. That's what happened. Um, the Bible tells us in Genesis 24, verse 34 to 35. Genesis 30, 24, 34 to 35. Abraham's servant was speaking about Abraham and said, my, The Lord has blessed my master greatly. He has become great. In fact, Abraham was full of blessings because he had received that God bless him. I stand to declare and decree, as we receive that God bless you, you shall be a custodian. You shall be full of blessings. When they are describing you, they say, that brother, that sister, that is blessed on every side. That shall be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Oh, let's quickly mention that when you receive the God bless you, curses are overruled. You become a custodian of blessings. And in the third instance, you are not just a custodian being blessed on every side. You are a conveyor of blessings. 
The Bible tells us in Genesis 12, verse 2 and 3, Genesis 12, verse 2 and 3, the Lord tells us, listen to this, I will bless thee and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. That as you go forth, wherever you are, you shall begin to release forth blessings. Why? Because you've received, you can't give what you don't have. But as you receive the God bless you today, beloved brethren, I stand to declare, wherever you go for, through the course of this year, brethren, your life shall be a blessing to multitudes. The Bible says, in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Through you, your office shall be blessed. Your family shall be blessed. The business shall be blessed. Your community shall be blessed. And I hear, hear so I shall a loud amen. And that is a louder amen. Shout a louder amen. Amen. But beloved brethren, let's ask ourselves, what are the things that happen when you receive that God bless you? What does it mean? What do you connect with? I'll share with you five things quickly that you connect with. When you receive the God bless you. In the first instance, when you receive the God bless you, you are being connected with the goodness of God. You are connected with the goodness of God. We see that in Psalm 128 verse 5. Psalm 128 verse 5. The Lord bless thee out of Zion, and thou shalt see the good of Jerusalem all the days of thy life. When God blesses you, you see the good of Nigeria. In the midst of COVID, no COVID, in Africa, wherever you are, you see the good of that land. You see the good of your continent. You see the good of America, the good of Asia, the good of Europe. You see the good of Australia. You see the good of various continents all over the world. Why? God's blessings are upon you. I declare, brethren, as by reason of the blessings of God being released unto you, Good things shall meet you by fire in the name of Jesus. People shall begin to manifest goodness, goodwill towards you. Evil shall be far from your dwelling place in the name of Jesus. Psalm 21 verse 3, Psalm 21 verse 3 tells us that the Lord shall meet you with the blessings of goodness. The blessings of goodness. Why? Because our God himself is known to be good. Psalm 107 verse 8, Psalm 107 verse 8, all that men will praise the Lord for his goodness. So when you hear God bless you by a, an authoritative source, you grab it, God's goodness is released unto you. I stand to declare anything called evil shall give way to the goodness of God in your life and your family in the name of Jesus. Shout a mega amen. Oh, in the second instance, when you are hearing that word God bless you, they are not just linking up to the goodness of God, they are linking up to the greatness of God. The Bible tells us, by reason of Abraham receiving that God bless you, the Lord said in Genesis 12 verse 2, Genesis 12 verse 2, I will make of thee a great nation. I will bless thee. I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. I stand to declare, the level you are is the lowest you shall ever be in life in the name of Jesus. As our Father and the Lord comes forth, declaring God bless you. Greatness is your portion. I declare, greatness is your portion in the name of Jesus. Why was Ishmael so great? Genesis 17, 20, Genesis 17, 20 tells us, that the Lord so said it. He said, I will bless him. I will make him fruitful. I will multiply him exceedingly. That's by reason of a God bless you. As God's blessings released unto you, brethren, I stand to declare and decree greatness, unparalleled greatness, shall be your portion in the name of Jesus. Psalm 107 verse 38, Psalm 107 verse 38, he blessed them also and multiplied them greatly. I stand to declare your business shall be great, your life shall be great, you shall be exceedingly great in the name of Jesus. Oh, the word of God makes it clear how various people had experienced greatness in the land. Isaac, Genesis 26, 12 to 13, Genesis 26, 12 to 13, because Isaac had been blessed, he sowed in the land. And that same year, he received a hundredfold. Check that, a hundredfold. Why? The Lord had blessed him. Verse 13, check that. The man waxed great. He went forward. He grew until he became very great. I declare for somebody, as our Father and the Lord mentions that God bless you tonight, and through the course of this year, you shall wax great. You shall go forward. You shall grow until you become very great 
in the name of Jesus. And let your amen be a great amen. Hallelujah. Amen. In the third instance, when you hear that God bless you, linking up with the goodness of God, linking up with the greatness of God, it also links you up with the glory of God. The word of God tells us in Leviticus chapter 9 verse 23, Leviticus chapter 9 verse 23, that as God, Moses and Aaron went to the congregation, they began to bless the people. The same way our Father and the Lord is releasing for blessings. And the Bible says, as he blessed the people, the glory of God appeared. Beloved brethren, wherever you are, as our Father and the Lord releases for blessings, God's glory shall come upon you. In your home, in your bedroom, in your office, wherever you are, God's glory shall be released in the name of Jesus. What happens when God's glory is released? Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 60, verse 1 and 2. It says, when God's glory is released, you begin to arise. You shine. God's light comes forth. Darkness gives way to God's glory. Every manifestation of darkness that has prevailed in your life, in your family, in the business, as you receive that God bless you during this Holy Ghost service, darkness shall give way to light. You shall begin to experience the glory of God. He who is the source of glory, the almighty God, shall release his glory upon your life. Your church shall become a glorious church. Your business, a glorious business. Your life, a glorious life. Why? By reason of a prophetic, authoritative, God bless you. Beloved brethren, in the fourth instance, when the God bless you is declared and decreed by an authoritative source, not by that child, no, an authoritative source and our father and the Lord is coming out very, very soon. When that God bless you is declared by your father and Lord, by our father and Lord, by your prophet. One thing is clear, apart from goodness coming forth, greatness and glory, gladness is made manifest. The word of God tells us, Psalm 21 verse 6, Psalm 21 verse 6, Thou hast made him blessed forever and hast made him exceedingly glad. Check that. By reasons of blessing, the person has become exceedingly glad. Not just small gladness, exceedingly glad. Brethren, why is that so important? Psalm, one, Psalm 10, I believe. Psalm, Proverbs 10, beg your pardon, verse 22. Proverbs 10, verse 22 says, The blessings of the Lord make it rich and added no sorrow. So when you get that, God bless you. Sorrow out. Blessings, joy unspeakable comes forth. You see, when you see some rejoicing and dancing and having fun, and you're wondering, in the midst of a challenging time, you're smiling. It's because the person has benefited from a God bless you. And so the person explains gladness. says, even in the midst of this situation, God is working things out for my good. I stand to declare to someone that heard my voice, no matter what's happening around you, for you, God shall work things out for your good. Your God will work things out for your good in the name of Jesus. And gladness, exceeding gladness, shall be your portion. The anointing of gladness, as the word of God makes clear, the anointing of gladness, Hebrew 1 9, shall be multiplied upon you. I stand to declare by his grace and mercy as we receive the God bless you from our Father and Lord today, the anointing of gladness shall wipe away sorrow from your lives, from your family, from that situation that has brought sorrow is wiped away today in the name of Jesus. Beloved brethren, I'm so excited. Because tonight is going to be a spectacular one. It's already a great one. The word of God tells us in Psalm 4, verse 7. Psalm 4, verse 7. Thou hast put gladness in my heart. That will be your testimony. Gladness shall spring forth. Even before the next seven days, I am confident there shall be outstanding testimonies in all your lives. In the name of Jesus. The hope of the righteous shall be gladness. The word of God tells us. In Proverbs 10, 28, Proverbs 10, 28, your hope shall be gladness. Finally, beloved brethren, when that God blessing comes forth, don't forget you connect with goodness, you connect with glory, you connect with greatness, you connect with gladness. And finally, brethren, when you receive that God bless you, you are connecting with God's nature himself, godliness. It means you are connecting with the almighty God, who himself is godly. 
that say, Lord, I want to have you in me. Check what the word of God says in Psalm 4, verse 3. Psalm 4, verse 3. I know that the Lord will set apart for himself he that is godly. You see, when you are living a life of godliness, the God bless you is connected. It just comes into your life. Don't forget Psalm 5, verse 12. Psalm 5, verse 12. The Lord shall bless the righteous with favor. I want to urge us. There's, there's a group of people. When God said this, when Balak wanted to curse them, but they couldn't be cursed. Why? Because God said they are blessed. They can't be cursed. But however, a time came in Numbers 25. Numbers 25. If you read 1, to 3. These same people that God had said, these ones are blessed. They can't because they are insulated from curses. They went into sin. They went into sin. They went to the world of women. They, they compromised their destiny. And from that time onwards, the word of God says the anger of God was kindled against them. A set of people that could not be cursed by reason of compromise. The anger of God came upon them and they were cursed. Their life became a reproach. I want to urge us, as our Father and Lord comes out, examine your heart. And if you know there are certain things that are not right in your heart, put it right. So that the God bless you will stick. It shall be made manifest. And as you live a life of godliness, your life shall continue to attract the blessings of God bless you. God, the Bible says, he shall bless you on every side. He shall envelope you with favor. Don't forget Psalm 1, verse 1 to 6. If you read that portion, Psalm 1, the Bible says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scoffer. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law that he meditate day and night. And the Bible says, He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Whatever he doeth shall prosper. That's God's desire concerning your life. So as our Father and Lord declares that God bless you, I am confident by his grace and mercy, good things, glorious things, great things, gladness shall be your portion. But there is a condition. Don't forget conditional blessings. You must put your ways right with God. As we start with the first Holy Ghost service for the year 2021, examine yourself if you've been in the faith. If there is anything that can hinder you're experiencing the joy, continued joy of a God bless you. Make sure you deal with it today. It's an opportunity for you to give your life to Christ. It's an opportunity for you to rededicate your life. It's an opportunity for you to put things right. The time is not tomorrow. The time is now. As I find the Lord will be coming up later, make sure you put things right now. And it's my prayer by His grace and mercy. That when that hindrance is dealt with, the blessings of the Lord that make it rich, that added no iota of sorrow, shall be multiplied upon your life on every side in the name of Jesus. And when people begin to see your praising with such goodness, such glory, such greatness, such gladness, because you are living a life of righteousness, they will ask, who did it? And your answer, Jesus. Oh, my God. Wow. By the time it's now, for you to reconcile your life to God. And it's my prayer, Father, that even as your children reconcile their ways with God, even as they determine to put right the wrongs in their life, that whatever is a hindrance to the experiencing, the beauty of a God bless you, now, O oh Lord, by your grace and by your mercy, those hindrances will be dealt with thoroughly and totally, that as they go forth through the course of this year, your blessings shall be multiplied upon them. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit. For I know, by your grace and mercy, the time for a new beginning is now. Blessed be thy name. Glory and honor be ascribed unto thee. In Jesus' spectacular name, we pray. And let somebody shout a mega amen. Amen. Beloved, I stand to say, God bless you.